Hey everyone, I co-host today with our executive producer of our mental health films, Chaz Shearer, and our guest today is a longtime collaborator and friend of Chaz, Tony Sands. He's a senior producer at Family Theater Productions and handles the feature film slate. For Family Theater, he has served as producer, writer, director on films such as Finding Mary, You Will See, Carrying On, Family Dinner, 40 Hours, Um, He was employed at Cinesite, where he worked on such films as Space Jam, Titanic, Dr. Doolittle, and Sphere. His resume is long, and I'm so excited for him to come on and talk about a film that even in the time of the pandemic, they were able to get this movie, Prey, in theaters. We're going to talk about that film and the hard work that his team has put into getting this movie out there and what a time that we need it. So please welcome Tony Sands on Mental Health News Radio. To the extent that we live our lives in a manner that is consistent with the truth in our heart, we thrive. Welcome to the Meyer Clinics podcast, and you just heard a quote from one of your hosts, Dr. Lisa Day. Join our licensed clinical professionals from various backgrounds as they discuss fascinating mental health topics with a wide range of guests. Meyer Clinics is a Christian counseling organization with multiple clinics nationwide dedicated to treating the whole person emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Welcome to our listening family. We thank you for joining us. Hi, listeners. I have a great guest on today with and also my trusty sidekick for all shows we do from the entertainment industry perspective. Chaz, thank you so much for coming on the show. My listeners know you well by now. Thanks for having me, Kristen. Yeah, absolutely. I love your listeners. (laughs) Oh, yes. And our Thanks, guest, everyone. <laughs> yeah, our guest you just heard about, Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So they know a little bit about you, but what they don't know is that you are one of the rare organizations putting a movie out into theaters in October of 2020. We're crazy that way. It's true. <laughs> I mean, if I if people don't get how... But how just unbelievable that is, I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. I mean, we're going to get into more of that. But first, let's talk about this film and and what it's about. Excellent. Well, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak about it. Um, On the surface of the story is about uh, is what we jokingly call the most famous person you've never heard of. And that's (laughs) Father Patrick Payton. Uh, he is a media pioneer. He is um, a uh, celebrity and connector um, from the golden era of Hollywood. Um, and he's also, though, uh, a, a Catholic priest who is up for sainthood. Um, in addition to that, though, he also is a very poor Irish immigrant who came to this country with nothing and in uh, very unexpected ways it changed the world. Uh, so the nutshell is that... Um, Father uh, Payton or Patrick Payton uh, came uh, to America um, from a very poor family, a farming family back in the early 1900s, came with his brother, um, and he had a very spiritual home. Uh, They always used to pray. In fact, the joke was they had more prayer than food. Uh, Mm -hmm. They prayed together every night as a family, but it kept them together. Um, However, then they had to to go seek um, a way to, to, to make a living and actually eat elsewhere. Uh, he came to America um, expecting to become a millionaire and instead found a calling uh, and actually uh, then joined a seminary and became a Catholic priest only to get very ill um, mm. and was on his deathbed. He ended up having a miraculous um, healing from that and in turn then um, really uh, wanted to reach out to, to help uh, people and help families through prayer. Um, and what was revolutionary about him is he used media to do it. And he became a huge um, mover and shaker uh, in radio and eventually television. And if you've ever heard of the phrase, the family that prays together stays together, he actually invented that yeah. phrase and ah, made it popular around the world. I had yep. no idea. Wow. <laughs> yes. If you ever kind of wonder where that came from, 
that's the that's the source of it. And uh, in addition, he for a brief time held the Guinness Book of World Records record for seeing more people face to face than anyone in history. He did these very powerful prayer rallies, um, which uh, gained millions of people wherever they happened throughout the world. In fact, um, one of his rallies is still the, the the fifth largest event ever to happen in San Francisco with 500,000 people in attendance in Golden Gate Park. And I'm just touching the um, surface of all the things that he did, but that's what the story is about. Now, under the surface, I do want to let you know, there's a wider story here about the power of perseverance, uh, faith, um, and prayer, um, and about really how anyone uh, can sort of achieve great things um, with that kind of faith and dedication. And that doesn't uh, rely on what religion you are, what what your background is, I think the story is universal from that element. Absolutely. Was Amazing. this was the filmed part of it? Then was that done? Obviously, before it was finished and wrapped before COVID hit. It was, yeah. And as, as typical as with Hollywood, things you're seeing now um, will uh, um, have you know, usually haven't shot. Um, Sometimes months or years <laughs> before right. they actually be <laughs> a few. Right. Um, you know, so that that can definitely happen, and this is uh, no no exception in this situation. Um, we actually um, had this. Well, one thing that was a blessing for us is that because Father Peyton was a media pioneer, we literally had thousands of hours of media on him voice recordings, film recordings, TV spots, the whole deal. And he was there, right, really from, from when radio was mass media all the way to when TV was launched, all the way to, you know, um, when movies were the dominant form of entertainment. And then he died in 92, not spoiler alert, he died in 92, um, but uh, he um, was there also to see kind of the birth of the web. Mm. Um, so that really kind of helped us out a lot uh, to have all that, that, that footage. We did one of those shoot some things, um, that made things very fresh and very active. And then to that degree, then we're able to, um, to film some things, uh, both here in the United States and overseas. But that wrapped, I'll be honest with you, like really late 2018, maybe the last thing we shot was probably 2019. So we were well in, in advance of the pandemic. Mm, well, that's good. Because uh, the fact that you can even get it out, I mean, I'm learning already and Chaz has certainly helped me navigate the waters of, of this particular industry. But, you know, you could be working on something and and you've forgotten about it because it's been so long and people have already said, oh, yeah, that'll never happen. And then boom, eh, it's been greenlit. <laughs> oh, so true. So yes. true. Yeah, that's always just, happens that way. Very I, much. I can't even tell you how many people have done, you know, filmed things, and I know now not to get all pushy, and and I've got plenty of other things to do too. But, but people that really hang their hat on that, like I just got a text this morning. When are you going to put out the show that we did about da 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 da? You know, the doc. You wanted that to be a docu series about racism, and I'm like, listen this is how the industry is even if you don't believe it that is how it is and add a pandemic on top of it <laughs> <laughs> just toss that into the mix yeah just throw that into the, yeah. Into, the, into the into the zone oh i it, know it literally has been go ahead chess no uh tony i was going to ask you where did you uh do principal photography where did they where did they shoot the film? And then where did you go back for reshoots? Is that where you filmed uh, over here in the U.S. again? Or, or, you know, let us know. It is. So we actually um, did a lot of our filming here in Los Angeles because he actually is a Hollywood fixture. Um, the, the company and ministry that he founded, Family Theater Productions, which has been around now um, for uh, just shy of 80 years, which is dinosaur right. old by terms of Hollywood, um, is actually on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, right around the corner from the Walk of Fame and the, the theater where they hold the Oscars every year. That's um, right. So there's a lot of filming that was done here in L.A., but then there's also stuff that was done um, back in New York and in um, Massachusetts, uh, where um, the order of uh, priests that he comes from was stationed. Uh, there's also some filming done at Notre Dame uh, because uh, that uh, Holy Cross, which is the group that um, he belongs to, that uh, they're like the Franciscans. Um, in the church where they kind of have a special um, mission within the church itself. Uh, they actually founded Notre Dame. 
Uh, so we did some, some filming back there, and then we actually did some filming in Ireland. I uh, did some pickups, kind of to be honest with you, some pickups all around the world, <laughs> because his uh, <laughs> ministry eventually became right. international, and he visited, right. um, you know, countries uh, all the way from the Philippines uh, to to Italy, and and extensive travel in South America. Amazing. So um, yeah, so then we what we did wrap uh, things here in Los Angeles, um, and uh, we were able to, to capture that kind of footage. Uh, by the grace of God, um, kind of everywhere uh, throughout the world. Again, though, we uh, would have a huge blessing just having this gigantic archives. We could pull stuff that, you know, that was literally from the, the invention of film um, and start really using that uh, to um, to sort of capture and um, tell the story. That being the case, so, you know, it's tricky. We finished this thing, you know, like I said, pretty much back in 2019. Um, and here it is. We're well towards the end of 2020, and it's just coming out now. Yeah. So it kind of gives you a sense of how tough things are in general uh, with the industry. Like, just nothing happens fast. Or or if it does, it's a big wait, and then it goes all in, a, in one rush. And just, you know, again, things go even at a weirder pace when you're in the middle of a global pandemic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right? weird, weird doesn't even cover exactly. it, right, Chess? <laughs> That's right. I mean, the funniest part about Hollywood, which in turn we love, but it's the phrase hurry up and wait you know it's 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 like come on come on come on we're ready we're ready we're ready for you and then and then it's it's years later you know and that was the first phrase i remember uh on a on a on a film set as soon as i as soon as i moved out to la and you know i'm like i'm like you know i'm always an early bird right so i i got on set about two hours early for a television series and then they said, okay, you know, uh, time to get in makeup, time to get in wardrobe, you know, uh, wardrobe and makeup. And then, you know, I went back to the trailer and I'm sitting in there and sitting in there and sitting in there for three, four, five, six hours at a time. And then, you know, they're like, all right, all right, we need Chaz, you know, on the radio. Hey, we need Chaz, for set, come on, we need Chaz, 10-4, you know, and, and I'm like, Okay, great. We we rushed on the set and I stood there for another four or five hours <laughs> until I was used, you know. <laughs> I it's it's the most amazing, you know, it, it's just the freeze of, of Hollywood, you know. And and people people love to rush things and they think that things need to be done on their time and then it's like having the patience and, and having that virtue um, is, is, is fantastic when you can have it. I love when I came to visit you the first time in family theater, um, you know, and I'm driving up sunset and I saw the old Nick studios uh, across the street, which yeah. aren't there yeah. anymore. And, and the theater. And um, you know, it was, I, I was it I Carly was going on at that time or not. I Carly it was yeah. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe it was I Carly was happening at yeah. that time. And, Meeting you and seeing, you know, Father uh, uh, Patrick and Father Peyton's uh, pictures on the wall w walls with uh, everyone he spoke to or a lot of people that he had on his radio show. And, you know, just hearing the story from you was fantastic. And I'm, I'm so glad and, 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 and excited that you guys were able to make it into um, into this uh, film project. And, and I I hope that. You know, it, it's one of the only films out in the theaters that are that's going to be new. That's correct, right? Correct. No, actually, it's so funny. We're going head to head with the uh, twenty. I can't remember it's twenty twentieth or twenty fifth anniversary of Hocus Pocus. <laughs> yes, uh, the Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Park. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's uh, the fact that you're you're able to even get it out. But what theaters is it going to be playing, in and and where? If you, if you want to find the theater that's nearest to you, um, definitely go ahead to pray the film, all is one word, pray the film dot com, and it says get tickets. Well, soon, and on the, on the very first page, you open up and it'll show you theaters around uh, the country where it's playing. Um, right now, if you're in Los Angeles, sadly LA is not open with movie theaters right. because of, uh, but you can go to Orange County and it's playing at the Irvine Spectrum down there. So it's okay. a little about maybe an hour it's or two. It's a nice uh, theater. I it think is, it has it the reclining actually, chairs too, seats. Yeah, I think so. It does, um, and and it was a uh, uh, bit of again a bit of uh, a miracle because um, uh, just because nothing can be easy, 
um, we were booking theaters and we were doing it on a sort of individual basis because of this. Uh, um, in these times, you have to be really selective. Every theater you open, in, you know, there's a cost. And, and the other thing, too, is for theaters, is a big deal about how well your film, film does an opening weekend. Right. Note to all listeners, if you want a movie to um, stay, or if you ever want um, a producer or a studio to keep making a certain kind of movie, please, please, please see it in the opening weekend. Mm. It's the thing that matters the most. If you watch it in the opening weekend and has a good opening weekend, one, it'll last and it'll stay for the next weekend or beyond. And two, it tells people that you actually, that this is, this movie is the kind of thing people want to see. You're like, oh, I'll catch it sometime. Right. Um, that's dangerous. So anywho, uh, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, we want to be carefully, carefully selective about this. So it's opening in the Irvine spectrum. We have theaters right now in Texas. Um, we have some in Massachusetts. Uh, we have a handful okay. uh, up and down the East Coast. We're in 45 theaters right now right. Um, around the country. And of course, depending on how things do, we'll expand from there. Um, part of that, too, is, is because of the way theaters are treating. Why, why this is a miracle, actually, though, is we're in more theaters. But uh, folks that are following the entertainment industry news, um, the, one of the largest theater chains, AMC, is not fully open. Right. And the second thing is the second largest right. theater chain, which is one that we were working with, just decided to shut all its uh, locations in the U.S. and the U.K. Yeah. So that was that. Regal then. Yes. Regal. And we actually had our movie with Regal Theaters uh, as one of the, you know, the chains we were going with. And we were booked. We were loaded. We were ready to go. In fact, we had a conversation with them on Friday and then oh. found out on over the weekend that the rumor was they weren't going to have their doors open come this week and it was confirmed on monday oh my gosh and so yeah so, <laughs> so, so you know <laughs> now by again by grace um they are keeping a handful of, of flagship um uh theaters open and one of them is the irvine spectrum so we're very grateful Good. to regal to keeping the, the spectrum open um because otherwise we would not, we probably wouldn't have anything even near los angeles mm-hmm. we do have on something in san, in san diego if you're near that neck of the woods. And again, if you're interested, um, by all means, you can go to praythefilm.com and see if there's a theater near you. By the way, there's also um, a means on that website to send a request and say, hey, I think you need to get an audience to, to a theater. Could you possibly get a theater in my neck of the woods? How many and people would you need to commit to um, showing up? I, ideally, what we'd say is, you know, that you're looking at having people come throughout the weekend. So let's say if you have like, you know, a club or a parish or um, a group, I mean, um, I will tell you right now, if you buy 25 tickets, a theater is, is selling out. Mm. Like they, that, that, that will sell, sell out a full theater. However, we want, we're looking for more than just one showtime to be sold. So um, there will right. be a way to actually just book a single, what they call four wall or buy out a theater. If you want to just have like that one group, but if you think, oh, I have folks who come all throughout the weekend then, you know, let us know. And if you, if, you, if you even had, if you thought you'd have like maybe, let's say overall a couple hundred people show up over the course of one weekend, that's more than enough mm. these days. These, normally speaking, like, you know, one, one theater, one screen and one cineplex would hold, you know, 150 to 200 people. But these days, if you have 25 people in one theater, they pretty much consider it sold out. And that is a whole interesting shift, too, that was happening long before COVID it was going in that direction, correct? Correct. Yeah. You know, um, you know, they, of course, you know, trying to get people um, into movie theaters, especially, you know, um, during the week. Um, and that's where you'd see things like Phasma events or the type of specialized screenings happening during the weekdays. So they just wanted to get people to show up to movie theaters. Um, but, you know, uh, COVID has made it so that most theaters are trying to abide by very strict safety guidelines. And among those is making sure people can't sit too close to each other and, um, you know, are properly distanced from each other. So you might have a, you know, a 200 seat auditorium and they, you know, will only sell out a quarter of it in order to meet the guidelines for right now. Now that may change, you know, hopefully as numbers get better and, you know, uh, vaccine techniques is, yeah, vaccine. Well, if the vaccine comes along, everyone is just <laughs> so right. hopeful. Right. So hopeful for that, you know, because, you know, that would be a way of, of you know, kind of uh, re-embracing somewhat of a normal kind of life. 
but you know, uh, even with, when safety measures is be- get better, like better air conditioning systems, you right? Know I mean, um, you know, uh, love it or hate it when you're indoors if everyone wears masks, you know, um, those kind of things can make a difference whether a theater can uh, feels or they can meet the state guidelines or the the county's guidelines uh, to reopen. Right, I can guarantee you the 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 great ones, you know, that I've gone to, of course, they are. I mean, I have the funding to be able to put better ventilation systems in. But the one I went to in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska, uh, where a rat ran across my shoe, that theater probably isn't going to be able to sustain. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Just put it out there. <laughs> So in terms of, um, I want to talk to you just a little bit about, um, you know, streaming platforms, because that is obviously where things go. And so many movies have just gone straight to streaming. Even with that happening, what we saw pre-COVID was this movie coming, this movie coming, because they followed what came out in the theater. You know, it, it was a rare thing or not totally rare, but rarer to have it just go, you know, straight to streaming unless it was filmed for that. Hi, this is Dr. Paul Meyer of the Meyer Clinics. Our Christian counselors across the country have a goal of helping all those who come to us to become what God has called them to be. If you're in a situation where you're not at peace within yourself or you just feel like there's joy that's missing in your life, we can come alongside to help you obtain peace and joy. This message is sponsored by the Meyer Clinic Foundation, a nonprofit Christian counseling ministry. The number is 1-888-7-CLINIC. 1-888-7-CLI-NIC. But now, you know, there are movies that are, were made for the theater and they are cutting deals to, okay, well, we can't get it in the theater. We can't wait. We've got to start making revenue on this now. Let's go straight to streaming. So, you know, you've been in this industry for a long time. What, what do you, how do you feel about the way that that's moving and how do you see this film playing in that arena? Uh, for us, very well. I mean, uh, so to answer the second question, for well, I'll answer the first question first. <laughs> um, you know, there's just nothing like seeing a movie in a movie theater. Absolutely. Um, be able to sit down, you know, sit down in the dark, have your attention, you know, on this gigantic screen with an awesome sound system. You know, it just completely and totally um, engages all your senses, and you're on, you're in for the ride. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of everything from IMAX to, to 3D. I know not everybody is. I love but it just all. the more I can, yeah <laughs> uh the more you can you can be i can be or you know a viewer can be in the story i think the better and you really do get a whole other um experience and i have to say too one of the, the sort of sad things is because of the cost of movies certain kinds of movies are harder to make like say for example dramas and comedies because there is a question of well why don't i just wait to watch this on netflix or some other streaming platform but let's be honest especially in like a comedy you know there's nothing like having um people laughing around you, you know, um, like hearing, uh, you know, people just really, you know, crack up at something or in a Absolutely. horror movie. I'm, yeah. I remember one time this, this, uh, you know, person just like screamed bloody murder at one scene. And I think they made that <laughs> one of the best horror experiences ever. <laughs> you well, know, there's the uh, energy of being around other people and feeling the foreboding and the terror and then the elation or when it's a movie like this one, that's going to uplift so many people, which we really need that right now. So that's why you should go see it. But but when you're having that shared experience, it's why they say the endorphins that come off of people from sporting events, from going to movies and seeing movies in theaters is, you know, everyone's blood pressure goes down and everyone got a big mental health feel good pill, you know, that they came naturally by being in communion with other people. Yeah, and it totally makes sense. And just so everyone sort of feel like you know in the same vibe, you know, and it has yeah. the same sort of connection, um, you know. And it does. Uh, that's one thing that's also great about it too. Is it sort of, in a way, slightly forces you to detach from all the things that are normally sort of giving you anxiety by distracting you, and lets you just be in the moment, uh, which is awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, we need now, that. It's it's awesome. You know, just having that feeling. You know, it, it allows you to to really detach. Um, from all the little things that are distracting you, right. you know what I mean? And let you just be in the moment and have that feeling. I thought about that with some friends of mine that are in uh, different soap operas uh, in different countries even, but uh, one of them that's filming 
figure they've they're filming now um, and they're just using all these safety precautions. And yeah, it's not so great that you can't see the handsome dude and the beautiful woman come together for a passionate kiss. You know that that's their spouse in a wig. But I <laughs> like the fact that they're, you know, they're trying. And one of the decisions that I've heard made from my friends uh, that are actors in these things or, you know, on set part of the crew, uh, they don't want to film people in masks. They don't want to do that, not because they don't believe in it. My God, they are the minute that they finish a scene, that mask is on and everything. You know, this is not about a mask or no mask thing. It's just they want people to be taken away from. They want them to to have what entertainment is there for. Take you away from the experience that you're that you're living with every day. So I, I thought that was a wonderful um, way to remind people that's what entertainment is for. It's to lift yes. you out of what you're what your regular life is. Yes, it is. It's an adventure. It sucks you in. So we want more and more and more. And we want that in real life, but we just can't get there. No, it's true. You know, that, that's, that's kind of the, the magic of a story, able, you know, being able to sweep you up. It's part of the reason, too, to be honest with you, why I think, you know, as much as, you know, game shows and reality shows are fun, um, you know, and they have their own type of like, you know, escapism. They're just, you we see a story catch fire and, you know, how people really just react to it. Everything from Harry Potter to Game of Thrones to Star Wars, mm -hmm. you know, you name it, just as nothing that are, you know, the uh, Marvel universe, you see people just uh, react to it around the globe because that story gets people in. And that's also part of the thing too about the mask situation with actors, you know, you just lose so much yes. connection because what you connect with is the emotions. And no matter how cool a dinosaur is or how cool the spaceship or the, sp or the lightsaber battle is, what you're really looking at at the end of the day are the reactions, the characters, um, you know, to what's going on. And, you know, you just lose so much of that when half the face is covered by a mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, you know, Darth Vader's awesome, but he's not very emotive. You know what I mean? Um, so, <laughs> right. So, so, so true. Yeah, the twist there, too. But that being the situation, kind of getting back to an earlier uh, question you had, you know, um, just because, though, of safety precautions and whatnot and, and um, all the concerns, you know, there has been a ton of media that's gone to streaming and there's been a play um, to put uh, a, a movement to put more and more uh, high-budget content um, on these different platforms, right. um, and that's where, and that's not where you can see certain things, um, you know, uh, that way. But uh, honestly speaking, right now it's it's a, it's a method or uh, it's a strategy of desperation. Yeah. You know, um, every movie is like a mini business. You yes. know, you you pitch it, you you do a plan for it, you budget it, literally. You get all the pieces in play. It, it has its employees and the whole deal. And then you know, you fund it and you make it. And so you make a product. It just happens to be that you know basically now these days on hard drives or in you know in certain cases on film reels. And then you've got to sell it. You know. Um, and uh, the problem is it's kind of like you know um, a car you know a car dealership or a um, uh, a warehouse. I mean, or like a grocery store or any place like that having product on the shelves. You know, it does the company no good for it to sit there, especially sit there too long. You know, it's got to move off the shelves at some point in the, you know, in the same way. You know, some stuff doesn't last forever. So, you know, and there's other reasons where I could be um, uh, problematic to wait too long. So in some cases, too, you might fund a movie using loans and loans come due. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, so with, with all for all these considerations, a lot of times in these, these cases, the studios and the filmmakers are like, look, we just got to get this in these movies out to an audience so they can see them, you know, and that's where all this stuff becomes very difficult because on one hand, you know, it's great to put a movie on Netflix to get eyeballs, but it's terrible for, for, um, it can be very difficult on business because the Netflix may, may pay you only a certain flat rate for that film. And who knows if it's enough to cover the cost of the movie. Right. And sometimes a place like, you know, Netflix or, or Amazon, but also uh, do what they call revenue share, where they will pay you for the amount of time the film is watched. But, you know, it really depends on how well you negotiate that deal and kind of be honest with you, who you are in the industry as to what kind of um, revenue you'll see off of those eyeballs, you know, those, those viewers. 
And they can also determine how long they actually viewed the film. You know, did they see the whole thing? Did they watch 15 minutes and turn it off? You know, those things all affect your um, uh, your revenue. And so this tr- the, the trick is that the, the studios and other filmmakers are realizing, well, we've got to get our product into the market. We have to get our, our films in front of audiences. Um, but, you know, um, and earning some money, but what's, what's the way to do that? You know, and here's where it gets tricky. You know, if a movie costs, you know, a hundred, a hundred and fifty, two hundred million dollars to make mm-hmm. yeah. a situation with something like a tenant or a Mulan or a James Bond. Well, you, you know, can you make that by just putting that online? And so that's, where you see these premium costs, right? You know, they realize that do they, you know, paying three ninety nine to rent this off of Amazon isn't going to cut it. You know what I mean? Or just even putting this on Netflix or even or Disney Plus isn't enough. There has to be other revenue uh, generated to cover that massive, massive cost. Um, I mean, just to give some inside baseball here, or some inside uh, or behind the look, uh, behind the, the, the curtain look. By and large, when a movie is in the theaters, you actually um, get to keep half the box office receipt, uh, sometimes a little bit less. And the movie house itself keeps the other half. And you're like, wow, that's kind of rough. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty big split. Um, however, back in the day, in the movie houses, you know, if you get a wide release, you could get, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to show up to your movie. Right. And that traded turned into millions and millions of dollars. I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars in box office. Um, so even if you have to split it, it's still well worth the while. However, now we're in a very new um, phase where sometimes the movie theater can only have 25 to 30 to 40 people per screen, period. So even if the movie has to quote unquote sell out, you see how much that reduces what the return on investment is. So on one hand, movies are desperate for movie theater, movie makers, studios are desperate for movie um, theaters to reopen that maximum capacity to be able to generate the kind of money that's necessary to pay for them, these, the budgets of these, these, these huge, awesome, fun blockbuster films. On the other hand, uh, too, they know it's a struggle right now. And so sometimes they've taken this strategy of, you know, what we'll do is just forego the movie um, screen, the theater, or do a limited release in theaters. But then on the other hand, make it available, but make it available at a premium price. Meaning your subscription to Netflix your not some of the streaming platforms that are free with commercials. We're talking about, you know, like what Ridley Scott's done with his new series, um, Raised by Wolves, where you have to, you can only see this on um, HBO Max, which is not, which is premium, premium content. And you have to pay for a separate subscription for, for that. So yeah, there's so many ways that the industry is just completely changing and it was already changing and then COVID hit. It's like it for it, it forced what was inevitable, but it forced it in a way where people were like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> right. You know, exactly right. Exactly right. But it, but it's been a mixed bag. It's been a very mixed bag. I mean I think in all honesty, you know, while um things like trolls did did better than they than they had hoped it would do, it's still not the same as it had, as if it was had, had been released. In the theaters, theater. in internationally, um, and I think Mulan's been a struggle. Um, it's done decently well. There was, I think, something like nine million downloads at thirty dollars a download. But on the other hand, uh, and that's people who actually also bought Disney, you know, purchased Disney Plus. But even still, doing the math on that, you know, it's good, but it, these are not necessarily wonderful numbers. So this is still very much um, something in in um, progress. Right, new territory. Done. Yeah, right, very much so. And of course, Definitely. everyone has their bets. Half the people are betting, oh, this is going to kill movies. Um, you know, maybe not completely, but you know, uh, the audience is all going to want to stay at home, and only kind of like aficionados or the hard cool film buffs are going to want to go back and pay money in a, for a movie theater. And other people are like, no, you know, as soon as people can feel safe about going to movies again, they certainly will. And so. You know, in a way, time will tell. Personally speaking, I don't know if you're like me um, or if you've seen folks around you, there's definitely uh, a worry and a concern about being safe. But I get know more and more people are getting very antsy to get out and do something outside of their home. 
Agreed. I mean, I have been a movie. That is how I escaped a lot of stuff in my childhood was movies. So I miss, you know, Sunday or definitely not on a, on a Friday night because then it's a little too wild for me. I'm, I'm, I'm old <laughs> enough now. I'm like, no, not Fridays, but going on a Saturday afternoon or going to a matinee on a Sunday, I mean, and then sitting in the theater, I miss all of that. I miss it all. I missed drive-in theaters too, but we'll see what happens with that, you know, with that industry. Well, drive-ins but, have made a huge comeback. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, they, they are booming again. You know, I went to the drive-in for the first time. I actually had a movie released earlier this year, and uh, as a you know, if a, a ironic twist of fate, there's a, a low-budget horror film, but it became the number one box office movie in America for five weeks in a row. What was the name um, of the movie? Wow. Called Followed. Okay. Um, and uh, Followed. It's a fun, it's a fun little. Um, they call it found footage, kind of like in the, in the style of Blair Witch, um, sort of a, a found footage ghost story. Um, was that but, the one that uh, had Kathy Lee Gifford's daughter in it? Um, that one was was actually done um, uh, a few years back, and that's a really awesome, fun film called Forty oh. Hours. Okay. It was released on television. And this one's a little, a little bit different, and, and um, uh, you know, it's actually produced, produced by a company called Viscape, but I lent them a hand and some and some uh, assistance uh, in producing it. Um, but in a nutshell, um, that uh, when it came out in theaters and uh, in in drive-ins, it came out in drive-ins. And so I went to a drive-in for the first time in probably 30 years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I mean, literally, I was like, you know, I was a little kid. You know, the last time I was at a drive-in, I remember yeah. sitting on a, on a lawn chair on the top of our van, you know, to watch, to watch one of these movies. And, uh, and now I'm seeing it again, you know, much later in life. Um, you know, and it was definitely a trip. But the, the drive-ins are doing great business these days. We see people feel safe in going to them, but they still want that big screen you know, uh, popcorn and hot dog experience. Absolutely. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, that, you know, um, if theatrical films are still alive and well, um, but you know, things have changed and yes, some part of it will never go back to the way it well, quite was, but we'll see, you know, what all does shake out now, now for us and for prey, um, that, I'm sorry, the, the movie we have releasing now is called prey, the story of Patrick Payton. Um, we are very confident about our, theater, uh, um, our digital release on that one. So we came out in theaters by agreement. We have to um, have it exclusively in theaters for a certain amount of time. And, and that's part of the reason why you see some places struggling with um, releasing things in theaters is because they're not sure they want to miss um, the audience and staying at home um, by releasing in a movie theater where they're not sure who will show up. Right. Um, because there's an agreement for most of us when we lease them these, you have to get to leave your movie in the theater exclusively for a certain window of time. And of course, that drives up interest and demand. It's a great way to see a movie, of course, too, but it's difficult these days. However, we know that, you know, um, there's a very strong, obviously, message of faith in this movie. There's also a very strong element that's Catholic in this movie. And let's be honest, there's, there's just a, a handful, I would say, or more of um, uh, older people um, and some and, and and people who have kids in the Catholic Church, in the right. big audience, and they don't necessarily want to run out to a movie theater. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there can be some concern about their exposure. Um, and so because of that, you know, we do know that we have a lot of people who are waiting to see this thing when it comes available online, and we're strategizing that release right now. Um, but we thought that the, the scope of the film would play so nicely on a big screen. We felt that people would want to get, you know, who who were interested would want to get out of their houses and do something that was uplifting and positive uh, for a while. And so we thought it was worth the gamble uh, to put the film in theaters. And that was really our motivation behind it was to do that and to also use this as the means to raise the awareness of the film. It's such a, a, a strong message about coming together with those that you love, whether it's your actual family or the family that you found through friends and others um, or whatever family it is that you've made and spending some time connecting with each other and with God you know, or with, you know, however you see your higher power, um, mm -hmm. you know, but in this case with, you know, with God, with Christ and, and, and spending time with, uh, in that matter every day and how doing that can really um, heal your heart and change your life. And that is the message everybody needs right now. I mean, all, all over the globe, that is what people are, are, you know, needing. So when I found out about this film, um, I thought, oh my gosh, we have to support this because, you know, 
we're a mental health organization. And so I don't, I don't associate the network as one religion or another, because there's everybody and there are people that aren't religious at all that are involved. However, that need for community, that need for connection, that's there, that's here, like it never has been. So, um, so I encourage anyone that even, you know, that's, "Ah, I'm not going to go see a quote unquote religious film. Forget that. It's also a success story. And, you know, what do we need right now? We need uplifting content. (laughs) And no, I mean, some of our our, our champions are Buddhist. Um, You know, we have some, uh, uh, um, some reviewers you know, who are really behind the film and, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they're two different, actually, um, uh, sects of Buddhism and, uh, they loved it. Um, I know I, you know, uh, had one company that's approached us recently about the film, you know, uh, very straight up. And like, this is, you know, we don't do faith, but we, but this is so inspirational. We mm-hmm. see this reaching a much larger audience. And that was our thing is that, you know, there is a power in, and hope, uh, there's a power, you know, in, in belief. You know, and there's a power in getting quiet, you know, and reaching out to something bigger, you know, and for me, uh, you know, that's God. Uh, for Father Peyton, clearly, you know, it was um, through the, like, the Holy Family, you know, Mary, uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, um, reaching out, you know, to, to God, to Christ, um, but to just center yourself, center yourself with your family, and if you don't have your family, you know, right there in your house, you know, a family that you can call or someone that you, you know, connect with or can trust in and getting quiet with them and reaching out to something bigger and better and letting that, um, and having that help you guide your life to something that is positive. Mm, fantastic. What a perfect way to close the show. Um, Tony, can you tell our listeners again, the website for the movie and also for family theater productions? Absolutely. So the movie is pray, P R A Y the film.com. So all right, all together, pray the film.com. And you can find show times uh, there um, and ways to uh, find out more about the movie and share about the movie. And also ways to actually, again, like I said, request us to see if we can put it in the theater near you. And the other thing would be then for uh, our larger website, for our larger company, family theater productions, which is at family org. So remember ones.com, you're the ones.org.org. Um, and there, not only do we have our other projects, which we have everything about from movies about faith to movies about dating <laughs> and about other inspirational, powerful stories, um, but we also have uh, other resources uh, for prayer and for family unity. Um, so we definitely would encourage you to come, uh, whether you're, whatever your faith background is, is come check us out. Fantastic. Jazz, thank you so much for co-hosting with me. Of course. Thanks for having me, Kristen. It was a pleasure. And uh, a lot of fun getting to talk to uh, you and Tony together. So thanks again. Absolutely. And Tony, thank you again. And listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Mental Health News Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. Tune in next time for another engaging discussion on relevant mental health topics. If you have any questions about Meyer Clinics, please visit our website at meyerclinics.com. That's M-E-I-E-R clinics.com or call us at 888-7-CLINIC. Don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or any of your favorite podcast apps. And please note that we are a member of and produced by Mental Health News Radio Network mhnrnetwork.com.